One of methods to identify and analyze work posture to ensure safety and comfort in work is the OVACO Work Posture Analysis System or OWAS. OWAS is a simple method to verify safety level which related to work posture and to evaluate risk level which leads to corrective action. OWAS method can define the movement of all parts of the body and can recommend suggestions to safer and comfort your feeling while working. Moreover, OWAS method will be more suitable to examine manual material handling. Posture analysis using OWAS method consider the following. First is the back position, second is the arm position, Third is the leg position, and the fourth one is the load carried. So we have four types of back postures to be considered, three types of arm positions, seven types of leg positions, and three categories of load. OWAS has four action categories. If the worker's posture belongs to category 1, it means normal and natural posture with no harmful effect on the musculoskeletal system or there is no action required. If the worker's posture belongs to category 2, it means posture with some harmful effect on the musculoskeletal system or corrective actions required in the near future. If the worker's posture belongs to category 3, it means posture have a harmful effect in the musculoskeletal system, which means that correction action should be done as soon as possible. If the worker's posture belongs to category 4, it means the load caused by these postures has a very harmful effect on the musculoskeletal system, which means that corrective actions for improvement required immediately. Hello everyone, I am Riza Hapas. Now I will show you an example of OVACO working analysis system. So here is the picture of a working man. Let's begin with his back posture. Based on the chart, the picture shows that his back is bent forward and twisted, so the score is 4. And then the arms. As shown in the picture, his both arms are below his shoulders, so the score is 1. Next, let us check his legs posture. Based in the picture, the worker's knees are both bent. Then, based on the chart, his score will be 4. Now we will calculate the load. Accordingly, a gas cylinder is usually 14 kilograms, so the score will be 2, since that the load he is carrying is between 10 to 20 kilograms. After having all the scores, we will now locate its category in the OWAS action category chart. With the scores 4 for the back, 1 for the arms, 4 for the legs, and 2 for the load, we will arrive to category 4. Finally, we'll now see what it explains in the OWAS action category chart by Kowalski and Maras. Since the category is 4, it explains that the load caused by these postures have a very harmful effect on the musculoskeletal system. So, corrective actions for improvement is immediately required. Good day. I'm Renaline Aipayahai and I will be presenting RULA Employee Assessment Worksheet. The task presented here is in a steel industry and this worker is welding steel. First is the arm and wrist analysis. The step one is to locate upper arm position and we score it. As we look at his upper arm, it is hanging at less than 20 degrees forward so we score it a plus one. The second step of evaluation is to locate the score of lower arm. The distance from the worker's elbow to his wrist is between from 80 to 100 degrees deviation and we score it a plus 1. The third step of evaluation is to locate wrist position and we score it a plus 2 since it has a minor deviation. Fourth step is wrist twist and we score it a plus 1 since the wrist is twisted in mid-range. For step 5, we use the values from step 1 to 4 and locate score in table A. Step 1 was the score of upper arm, which was 1. 
Step 2 was the lower arm score, which was also 1. Step 3 was the wrist score, which was 2. And step 4 was the wrist twist score, which was 1. All these scores combined together, the final score of upper and lower arm wrist position and wrist twist is 2. And this is the score in step 5. Going on to step 6, add muscle U score. The posture is mainly static, so we score it a plus 1. Step 7 is to add force and load score. Since load is less than 4.4 pounds, it is scored 0. Score from step 5, which is 2, plus score from step 6, that is 1, will give a result of 3. This then becomes our score in step 8. 3 is also the score of wrist and arm. Next, in table C, we circled number 3 in wrist and arm score. The next steps are the neck, trunk, and leg analysis. Step 9 is to locate and score the neck position. The worker's neck posture is deviating more than 20 degrees, so we score it a plus 3. Step 10 is to locate the trunk position and score it. The trunk score is 3, since the trunk position is deviating from 20 to 60 degrees. Step 11 is the leg score. Since the legs and feet are not supported, we score it a plus 2. For step 12, we use the values from step 9 to 11 and locate score in table B. Step 9 was the next score, which is 3. Step 10 was the trunk score, which is also 3. And step 11 is the leg score, which is 2. All these scores combined together will result to a score of 5 for step 12. Step 13, add muscle U score, and we have a score of plus 1. Step 14, add force and load score, and we give it a 0. Adding the scores from steps 12 to 14, obtains neck, trunk, and leg score, which is 6. Going back to table C, we circle the score of neck, trunk, and leg, which was 6. The intersection of 3 and 6 gives a score of 5. 5 is the final score, which means that the person's working posture is poor with a risk of injury, so further investigation is needed and changes should be made soon. Good day. I'm going to tackle about the step 1 to 6 of the REBA analysis. REBA or the Rapid Inter Body Assessment Tool uses a systematic process to evaluate both upper and lower parts of the musculoskeletal system for biomechanical and musculoskeletal disorder or MSD, which is associated with the job task being evaluated. What are you looking at? The picture is a man who works at the factory that is maneuvering the machine. First step is locating the neck position. The neck scores too because as what you can see on the picture, the neck is leaning forward by 20 degree or greater than 20 degree. Next step is locating the trunk position. The trunk scores 3 because as you can see, the trunk is leaning forward between 20 degree and 60 degree to exert force into the machine. Next step is locating the leg position. The leg scores too. Although both legs are straight, I still consider the pressure received by the knee in exerting force. Next step is determining the posture score and identifying the intersected number in the table. Step 1 scores 2, which is in the neck position. Step 2 scores 3, which is in the trunk position. Step 3 scores 2, which is in the leg position. And the intersected number is 5. Next step is the add force or load score that is equal to 1. I gave 
one on the load score because as you can see the workload is less than 11 pounds and the force applied is repeated then add the posture score or the in intersected number to the force or load score to come up with the score a which is six step six is the preparation of the table c and i located the score a on the table which is six good day everyone this is jaya alegarbes i will be continuing the riba assessment of ralph bernardo's example activity now on my part i will be discussing the part b which is arm and wrist analysis and that is from step 7 to 13. So part B, this is the arm and wrist analysis, and this will start with step 7. For this step, we are going to locate the upper arm position of the worker, which is here. And as we can see, his upper arm is not adjusted, is not extended, is not raised forward nor backwards so it's within the range of 20 degrees so we give it a plus one for the adjustments if shoulder is raised no upper arm is abducted no the upper arm is supported or person is leaning also no so we only have um, plus one for step eight locating lower arm position which is this part, as we can see that his lower arm is deviated within the range of 60 to 100 degrees only and not lesser or more than that, so I give it a plus one. For step nine, which is locating wrist position, as we can see here, both of his wrists is deviated only within 0 to 15 degrees so we give it a plus one for the adjustments we can see that both of his wrists is neither bent from midline nor twisted so there are no additional points and we only get a plus one for the wrist score now using values from steps seven to nine from the previous slides we are to locate the posture score in this table which is table b so the score for the upper arm is one lower arm is also one and wrist score we have one and that's how we get the posture score which is also one now to get the score for step 12 we would need to add the scores from step 10 to step 11 um, we already have the score of 1 for step 10, which was analyzed from the previous table, which is the posture score. And for step 11, we are going to add the coupling score. As we observe here, his hands are well fitted to the handle and he also has a good mid-range power grip. So that's only a plus 0. We add them up and we have one for score B, which is the step 12. Now for this table, we would need the scores for A and B. Score A was analyzed from Ralph Bernardo's analysis a while ago, and we have recently um, computed for score B. Score A from Ralph was six, and score B from our recent computation was 1. So that's how we get 6 for table C score. So now we are on our last step, step 13, which is determining activity score. For this part, we can get a maximum of 3 points. But before that, we're going to review each point. So, if one or more body parts are held for longer than one minute or static, that's a plus one. So, from the picture, yes, one or more body parts are held longer. Um, plus one if repeated small range actions more than four times per minute. Um, no. 
Plus one if action causes rapid large range changes in postures or unstable base, which, um, yeah. So that's a plus two. We get two points for activity score. Determining the score for table C and activity score, we get a REBA score. So six plus two, that's an eight. And eight is under the category of high risk so as we can see this is a high risk task and action requires us to do something immediately investigate and implement change immediately so that's all for reba assessment i hope you guys understood the presentation